Hi, I'm Albert Carantes. Don't be intimidated by going to see a lawyer. At our office, we talk to you. We listen to you. We read everything you have. We give you a free consultation with a lawyer, and then you're free to do whatever you want to do. I hear that you got a DUI, correct? Yes, we do. Okay, so it's a first offense. No accident. Everything looks uh, simple so far. But it's not that simple, because the first offense DUI carries up to six months in jail. It carries a criminal record that will uh, last a lifetime. There cannot be a withhold of adjudication. In other words, the judge can't give you a break and say, I'm not gonna convict you. The DUI uh, can't be sealed. You know, it stays on your record forever. And the DUI, they have two cracks at you. They have the first crack, which is the formal review or the uh, administrative suspension part of it, which they took your license on the spot, right? Right. We get a chance within 10 days to ask for a hearing. We get you a license. Usually the license will last you 42 days. And while I fight it, and I get to go to one or two hearings to try to challenge that and invalidate that and get you your license back. There's a waiting period. In your case, you blew on the on the uh, breathalyzer, the intoxilizer. So I get a shot at um, getting you a hardship, but you, you may have to be without a license for 30 days. That's the only bad part of that. So I would file that petition if you want me to. Now, some people like to waive that and they take the record. They take the record of the suspension, it says on your record, suspend it six months, and they'll get an immediate hardship. Uh, you have that option too. You pay $25, we waive the hearing. It's like pleading guilty, I don't like to do that. When you hire me, it's the fight. When you hire me for the criminal case, it's also the fight. I'm not one of those clinics, high volume, that they take your money, then they go to plead you out. I like to fight the cases. And I, you know, I can't tell you I'm gonna win every single case. I can somehow, sometimes I have to negotiate, sometimes we go to trial. Sometimes we win the case on a motion. Sometimes I file so many motions and paperwork that the cop doesn't appear to argue it at the time of the motion and the case gets dismissed. There's different ways to win. Uh, they have to cross every T and dot every I on these things because they want everybody to be treated equally and uniformly. So if they treated you differently, I have to spot that, I have to find that. I have to get what's called the discovery. I have to examine the discovery, find out if the officer made any mistakes that would treat you differently than someone else. I bring it to the attention to the judge and the judge might exclude that evidence, that part of it. It could be a statement where they didn't read your Miranda rights. It could be um, uh, the roadsides if they didn't follow the proper course and procedure. Uh, it could be um, just a bad stop. The cop decided to stop you because he didn't like you, he profiled you, he didn't like your race, creed, color, the way I mean, you could have uh, like a big gold chain and be in the wrong side of town with a t-shirt and the judge cop might not like you and say, let me stop that guy and see, and then he smells alcohol, boom. Then I get out of the car, let me do the test, whatever. I can get that to that evidence. I can find that evidence and it could lead to throwing out the whole case, the suppression. Okay, another thing I always advise drivers is you don't have to admit anything in this country. You have a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Right. So if they ask you, have you been drinking? You don't have to answer the question. Or you could just say no. Uh, only you know if you have or you haven't. You could say, I don't want to answer any questions without an attorney. Or you could say, I want to remain silent. But people don't because they go, oh my God, he's going to smell the alcohol, he's going to know, let me be honest, whatever. When you be honest, you're just volunteering information that's incriminating against you. I'm not here to be a saint and to tell you, uh, you know, you have to be perfect in life. You have to treat a police officer stop as an encounter with someone who's looking at whether he's going to arrest you or not for a crime. He's being paid to do that. The officer is, is a nice person, they're out there doing their jobs, whatever, but if they smell alcohol, if they smell, they're gonna arrest you anyway. So why add to the, to the case so that the state attorney has more evidence against you when it goes to trial? It's better to remain silent, exercise your Fifth Amendment right. Your Sixth Amendment right is to have an attorney. So when you say, I want an attorney, he's supposed to stop asking you questions. Sometimes they don't, you keep insisting. I have an attorney, I want an attorney. That's it, that's all you answer. Never do the roadside test, never, never do them. There's no reason to talk to the officer other than be polite, give your license, registration, and insurance, identify yourself, because the law requires you to provide the license to the officer. You can lower your window and give the license to the officer. You don't have to even talk so he doesn't smell the, the alcohol. But if they say they force you to get out of the car, you get out of the car, whatever, they want you to do roadside tests, you say, I, I don't want to do anything without an attorney. Always mention the attorney. So, at this point, my argument in your case is they have no probable cause for the arrest because basically you 
they don't have the roadside test and you do have a right to refuse them, you refuse them. The, the, the whole thing about fighting these cases is to do, you're, you're in charge, you're the boss. If you want to go to trial, I'll tell you what the risks are in the case. And if you go to trial, you can do a little worse if you're found guilty, like you might be facing some jail time if you go to trial and you lose. So I have to tell you that up front, you could be looking at jail time. A lot of judges are fair and they give you the same deal they would have given you before than after the trial. But some judges tend to say, well, you know what? They offered him this deal. He didn't take it. If I offered the same deal to everybody, everybody would go to trial and we couldn't do it. 98% of the cases, 96 reading, get settled before trial. Only 4% of the cases go to trial. The system would collapse if, if every single case went to trial. They really can't give you. So that's why we negotiate with them ahead of time. But my goal when I go into a case on a DUI is always to go to trial and always try to get a not guilty. That's my initial goal. A lot of the times we don't get there because the case gets dismissed. A lot of times we file a motion to exclude this. It's like a four-legged table. You knock out a leg here, table wobbles. You knock out another leg, the case falls. The table falls. That's what we do in a lot of cases. We're able to get those dismissed before trial. In other cases, we get right to the brink of trial and sometimes the state attorney offers me a diversion which means, look, we'll, we'll reduce this to a case with no points or something, maybe a reckless driving with no points, and you do, you know, you'll do the school, you'll do some hours, you'll do some volunteer work, you might even have to have an ignition interlock for a couple months, but we'll reduce the case. And, and then take the DUI off. You take the DUI off, and then if you have no other adjudications of guilt on your record, I can seal, uh, actually, I can, yeah, I can seal the case from the public record, and we can send the order to the judge to remove it from your driving record, and then that's your one shot at life. That's sometimes we do that. Keep my number on speed dial. It's 305-644-1800. 305-644-1800. That's the number to the Ticket Law Center in Miami. Albert Carantes. You'll know why they say, more than just a lawyer, I'm a friend.